my name's Randy Hoffman, and I teach managerial accounting. It's also known as Accounting 201B here in the Mahalo College of Business and Economics. I've been teaching here at Mahalo for uh, the past eight years, and prior to that, I was at Channel Islands uh, and uh, for about four or five years. Being an entrepreneur in the world of technology, I was one of the co-founders of Magellan Systems, the satellite navigation company, uh, and I was actually between the uh, between sort of technology startups. I thought, wow, the Channel Islands is opening up in my, in my county out there in Ventura. Um, I have always wanted to teach a little bit, so I, uh, I gave them a call and I was able to, uh, uh, the first semester I was a, a part-time uh, instructor uh, on the inaugural faculty, which was pretty cool. And it was, I think we had about 15 to 20 students per class, so it was very small. And, uh, but I, I embraced uh, Blackboard and the capability that it provided at the time. This is back in 2003, so quite some time ago. And um, I discovered that I really like to teach. And so I became full-time the next semester. And uh, with uh, Channel Islands uh, being relatively small, I wanted to participate on a much larger level. So I applied here at Cal State Fullerton. <laughs> rate for the class uh, was unacceptable. It was it stood at 43 percent, and uh, which and both that was both for the 201A, which is the prerequisite to this class, and uh, and 201B. And so we were a because we we're in the core program. Every business student uh, here in Mahalo has to take these two courses. Uh, the curriculum was being um, there was a log jam, and uh, we needed to break that. We took a look at a, a variety of different models, and uh, one of them was very interesting uh, at Ohio State University. had something similar, uh, but not exactly like ours. And so we, took, we went back and visited uh, their, uh, their program for their uh, lower division uh, accounting courses. And we, meaning um, my, uh, uh, the, the gentleman who teaches 201A, the prerequisite to this course, and we took a look at it and we thought that that was an interesting approach. They do a case study and they also do a, a lecture. Um, and even though they were on a quarter system, not a semester system, and so there were a lot of differences in terms of content. Uh, but we took that basic structure and we adapted it to the, uh, uh, to, for our needs. One of the things that we did was is we adopted a, a, a portion of the flipped learning instruction uh, uh, model, which basically takes the uh, lecture out of the classroom and puts it on video so students can watch it at their convenience. And that frees up time in the classroom to do other things. Uh, it uh, also, we took one of the days and turned it into a case study uh, day in which students would solve cases in groups of four to five. Uh, and they would then write up the, uh, the solution and turn it in for, for grading. The other day, uh, we turned into a discussion of of uh, uh, concepts, and we did that in a large lecture hall that comprised about 250 students. So when you look at it, we have two days a week. One is 50 students uh, in a classroom that is uh, managed by a student assistant under my direction. And then on uh, the other day, all 250 come into the, come into the large lecture hall, and uh, we have a discussion about the concepts of managerial accounting. Uh, we have found that this approach um, has significantly reduced the repeat rate from 43 percent uh, down to about 20 to 21 percent. The, the video is a, is a critical port, part of the, uh, uh, of the course and uh, what I did was fairly straightforward. I took the uh, publisher's uh, PowerPoint, narrated PowerPoint uh, presentations on a chapter by chapter basis. I could then uh, edit them uh, according to the learning objectives we were focused in on for a particular chapter. And then I would turn it into a video. And uh, by, when I did turn it into a, a video, uh, I also branded it with the Department of Accounting, uh, Cal State Fullerton, uh, Mayo College of Business and Economics. I got permission from the publisher to do that. Uh, they had no problem with that. It was a very easy uh, approval process. And um, I turned that privately labeled a PowerPoint presentation that was narrated uh, into a video, and then uh, occasionally I would add some additional content, uh, some humor, I, I like to think, uh, to sort of keep it interesting. 
The students watch that video at their convenience, and I have that on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter basis. Uh, when they come to class on Tuesdays, in my particular uh, situation, they walk into a classroom of 50 students that have been uh, pre-assigned to a group at the beginning of the semester of four to five students, and they spend the semester working on uh, individual cases. Uh, they usually last one to two weeks. Uh, they turn them in for, for grading. Uh, they get their, we, uh, they write, they have to write a memo uh, generally with the case, so they get more writing uh, experience. I tell students that what they should do is they should each complete the case on their own and then come together as a group and find out what the differences exist and that way they'll really learn th something and uh, by learning from each other it's uh, it really is interesting to see that process when it works well uh, a good group will always will almost max out the points on any given case because they look at it from an individual point of view and then come together on a collaborative basis and uh, they learn from each other and it does work so I, we simulate the real world they participate in solving cases uh, write up a solution uh, and those five different classrooms that have 50 students each are uh, monitored by a student assistant under my direction who facilitate the, uh, uh, the students in terms of answering some questions and leading them to certain uh, uh, conclusions, I guess you'd say. And I float through there uh, during, the, uh, during the time that they're in those individual breakout rooms. And uh, it, it works very well because the students are learning from each other and it's a collaborative process. On Thursdays, the 250 students at 8.30 and then at 1 o'clock walk into our large lecture hall here in Mahalo, room 1502, and uh, that's where they spend the next 75 minutes discussing uh, the more difficult concepts of the particular chapter with me. It's important the, uh, that they pay attention and participate in this, in this discussion of, of uh, problems because it's at a higher level of, uh, of learning at that point in time because we go through the more difficult aspects of the chapter. Uh, we have uh, also taken, uh, established a, what we call a course assistance center, which is uh, it's a room about twice the size of this office and uh, we have staffed it with graduate uh, student accounting majors. So the students can come in at any time between nine and four on Monday through Thursday and get help with their homework, get help with uh, uh, working on a particular uh, difficult aspect of the case. We, don't, we never give them the answer. We just, when they ask a question, we ask another question and it leads them ultimately to the solution and it works very well. <music> That's why our repeat rate has gone from 43% down to 21% when, we, when you look at the aspect of we have an assistance center that's open on a regular basis. Uh, there's an assignment due every, on every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now they can do it earlier. They can do it all at once up front if they want. But now they're visiting the, the course at least four, generally five times a week, which is a lot more than, it, than uh, what was happening before. And we find that when you take it in smaller bite-sized pieces, that uh, you retain more. We require attendance, and if students miss a class, they lose points. And we, uh, we take attendance both in the case study room, and we also take attendance in the large lecture hall. We assign them seats. And if there's an empty seat, there's missing points. If they're showing up, they're typically doing the homework and reading the, and, reading and watching the lecture videos. Uh, we uh, have collaborative learning uh, that goes on. And I have a cell phone and a laptop ban. Uh, they cannot use, they cannot have their cell phone or their laptop out. It must be packed away uh, because I find that uh, students have a tendency to um, surf the net if they are, uh, particularly in a large class like that, because they think they're invisible. And that causes a distraction. And we will uh, deduct points if they are uh, found to be violating that policy. Every semester I add a different element or change something a little bit different to make it a little bit different to see what the impact is. A couple semesters ago we added iClicker to the, to the large session 
And that has helped an awful lot as well. It keeps people engaged uh, with, in a room of 250 students. You sort of got to get them engaged and keep them that way. And uh, when we, it's time to pass out the in-class problems that we work on, while they're being passed out by the student assistants, I will typically run a 30 second, a 45 second video that's humorous, that pokes fun at accounting, it pokes fun at finance majors, marketing majors, you name it, nobody is safe. And, uh, and that uh, gives them a little distraction for uh, about 30 or 40 seconds while, the, while they're being, the problems are being passed out. And it sort of gives them a break from the intensity of, of solving uh, accounting problems. Uh, I think that, uh, yes, students, uh, you know, they are they're adults, they should be responsible for their own learning, and in fact, we incorporate that in the design of the course because they are responsible for watching the lecture videos. And uh, we can't force them to do that, but if, we, uh, but if they don't, then they will pay the price of, uh, of probably having to retake the, uh, the course. So uh, there is still, they still need to exercise their responsibility to, uh, to do the work, but um, we're going to uh, um, incentivize them. See, we're all about you know, business, free enterprise, and uh, um, we incentivize students to, um, uh, to come to class to do the work, and um, they usually respond very well. We require attendance, and if students miss a class, they lose points. We have found that this is very effective. Uh, we had last semester, there were 77, we had 77% of the students not miss a single day of class. And uh, that's a substantial difference than what we did the first semester. When we didn't have attendance requirements, by the end of the semester, I think we were probably drawing about 25% of the students in the lecture portion of the, uh, or the classroom discussion portion of the uh, course. And uh, now it's, uh, it's unusual to see somebody not be in class. And I think that that really helps the, uh, the overall, or lowers the overall repeat rate, because if you're not showing up for class, you're probably not doing the homework. And uh, if you're not doing the homework, you're certainly not learning the material. From the day I uh, started here at Cal State Fullerton, uh, I began to, every semester, increase the capability and the delivery of content uh, in the learning management system. And uh, about two years ago, I learned of the uh, quality online learning and teaching program that the California State University had put together. What, uh, I, it had a, uh, a rubric of about 54 different points uh, to, uh, that, had been, that they had done a study across the U.S. about online learning. And uh, they encouraged instructors to um, fashion their, wet, their learning management system after uh, these 54 criteria. Uh, and in doing so, they incentivized us by creating a recognition program. And when I took a look at the, uh, the 54 points, what I did was I said, well, I'm almost there. But by going through the process of the, of the, of the cult uh, evaluation, I was able to really sort of fine tune uh, the delivery of the content uh, in my course and uh, everything from navigation to uh, uh, access to accessibility, uh, those types of things. Uh, for example, one of the things that they, were, they looked for was uh, doing closed caption on your lecture videos. And I added that capability as a result of that. And so it, was, uh, it helped me really sort of fine tune everything uh, so that it is with uh, using the best practices. When the CSU did an evaluation of the courses uh, that uh, were available, I was, uh, I was fortunate in that mine was selected as one of the uh, eight uh, I guess you'd say award winners for 2014. I didn't set out to design a, an award-winning course. I just set out to, uh, to educate and lower the repeat rate uh, of my accounting 201B students. But uh, it's something that, uh, that was very helpful participating in the program because it really sort of fine-tuned everything. And um, uh, I have uh, gotten you know, a lot of recognition for it. Somebody once told me they were looking at the past award winners, and they said that, uh, that it was the first accounting program uh, that had been selected as one of the award winners uh, since inception. And also, it was the 
uh, first hybrid course uh, that uh, was selected from Cal State Fullerton. There's a fair amount of humor in the classroom. I like to have, keep it light because it's an intense subject and uh, uh, we, we have a good time. And I promised them at the beginning of the semester with, uh, with a, uh, an introductory um, welcome video that the stuff that they learn in my class, they will use their entire career and that I guarantee it. Uh, and then I also say, and if you decide to go to law school or become an architect or what have you, you're still gonna use those concepts if you go all the way to become, if you become a partner in that firm because job order costing is just as relevant in a law firm as it is to a manufacturing firm. And if you wanna be a partner, you gotta know that stuff. So we try to make it relevant on a daily basis and they respond well. But it's, it's not any one thing that uh, I think has reduced the repeat rate. It's a lot of little things and some big things, uh, but um, I'm very pleased. But I'm not satisfied at this, this point in time. I think that uh, the repeat rate should be less than 20, 21%. I think it should be, I think that everybody intellectually uh, that comes to this university has the capability to pass the course. We just have to find the right motivation and the right tools to, uh, to get them there. And, uh, and we've we're, we're, we got a lot more to do, and uh, it's continuous improvement. I think in, in today's world, if you're not continuously improving things, no matter what it is that you do, you fall behind. And we're not going to do that in the Department of Accounting and here in Mahalo.